22 first alumni teams made robots this week. Let's check out the highlights. We start with Steel City Robotics Alliance. They have made a lot of modifications to the kit bot. So if you're a rookie team, they're going to be using the kit bot for this year. Definitely check them out. They've made a lot of simple design changes for this year's game. One of the teams built a claw to pick up the notes. We're not sure that this example is the best way to go about this year's game, but there were many other teams and took some different ways, either over the bumper or under the bumper. For those that went under the bumper th this year's game, the advantage is that you don't have anything extending outside of your ro robot perimeter. However, smaller wheelbase in which you have to line up to basically roll over the note to pick up. Doing an over the bumper intake requires a whole extra mechanism and maybe another motor to have something go over the bumpers, but does give you the advantage of sometimes having a larger area like a cow catcher. So that way you don't have to be completely precise to get a note inside your wheel perimeter in order to intake. What was really neat to see some teams become innovative by using the same mechanism uh, for the intake to double as the feeder or indexer with their robot. There are many ways to index notes inside your robot. After the intake picks the note up, you have to deliver it to your shooter somehow. Many teams use belts. Belts are something that cars use. It's a very popular mechanism to make one thing go from one side of the robot to the other. If your team doesn't have belts, one of the Robot in Three Days teams use yoga bands. It's an off-the-shelf, inexpensive option, and you never want to miss leg day. When it comes to scoring for the amp, we saw a lot of creative solutions this year for Robot in Three Days. One of the neat things we saw is a variable flap, which is double duties for both the source as well as the amp. We already talked a little bit about the articulating intakes. One mechanism can be used to get notes from the source, off the floor, as well as score it into the amp. AC Robotics came up with a creative solution. They have a pneumatic cylinder that pops up, they shoot very lightly onto it, and then they drive over to the amp, and when they retract the air cylinder, it falls right into scoring position. In terms for shooting towards the speaker, we saw a major consensus with rollers this year. The only difference is flavor. A lot of teams either use a horizontal rollers, so on the left and right side, to hit the note to score, and other teams opted for vertical rollers, which actually roll from the top and bottom over the note to score. Steel City showed an excellent example how to score from the podium. This is a protected position where people can't come and play defense on you. And you'll have consistency because you'll always be on the same place on the field at the same time. In terms of lifting or climbing for this year's challenge, we saw a lot of different flavors. And they're going to be breaking apart into two different styles. First most, we saw teams that are unable to go underneath the chain or through the stage throughout the match had a simplified version of a climber. Simple hook, able to grab the chain exactly at eye level of the robot and be able to pull itself up towards end of game. Then there are many types of actuating hooks. Uh, climber in a box from Andy Mark is an excellent example. It is a spring-loaded actuating hook that goes up and then winches itself down. Some robots had two hooks that actuate up and then pull themselves down uh, that use two different winches, two different motors. Uh, some just use one. And one of the things that you want to keep in mind with lifting is that there's different ways of doing it. We saw different variations of motors, pneumatics, springs, you name it. It just comes down to packaging and what works best with your robot and your team. We do want to point out one of the rules in the rule book is that scoring in the arena is scored five seconds after the timer hits zero. So you do want to be sure that whatever climber mechanism you use, your robot's able to stay on the chain five seconds after the timer hits zero. Throwback to Robot in Three Days 1.0 back in 2016 for Steamworks. We made a ratcheting wrench mechanism that winched the robot up the hook and loop chain, and but it was also very easy to design that helped us lower it. This is a mechanism that you may not have the resources to buy a winch off the shelf, but you may have a tool already in your toolbox that'll do the job. Reminder to always check the forums. We checked to see if ratcheting wrenches weren't allowed this year. Uh, ask the forum just in case. One of the neat things we saw this year is the unqualified quakas, where they were able to build a separate robot that was specifically for a what they call buddy climb, in which two robots at a time were able to climb up on the chain. This would require you building a mechanism to stick on Alliance Partners robot, so that way they'll be compatible for your next match. It's a trap. Let's check out all the robots this week that scored in the trap. And with this year's game, 
with all the advantages and being able to traverse through the field, you want to keep in mind that some of the teams were able to package the robot, which is able to go under the chain or through the stage. Self-riding robots? Is it necessary? Don't know, but it's fun to watch. The unqualified Quokkas actually had time to work on autonomous. They were able to produce a three note autonomous. So make sure with either the same robot or spare robot, you give that to your programmers and give them enough time to be able to implement autonomous code for this year's game. As always, read the manual. Big Sky Robotics learned the hard way that their robot was not meeting inspection 50 hours into their robot build, but they had a lot of great designs. Check them out. Driving is important this year. Make sure with whatever drive system y'all decide on, you give your drivers enough time to drive. There's a lot of areas with this year's game on the field to incur penalties. You want to avoid that as possible, as much as possible because of cycle times with other robots. Also, keep in mind, this year we saw a lot of like note compression and damage on the field. So keep that in mind with design in your robot. A lot of the really cool robots that you see in these videos use a lot of sensors and other type of technology inside the robot that you don't necessarily see in a really cool video. Give your programmers enough time and add a lot of extra control to the robot to make it look really great this season. And when you do that, you allow the opportunity for your team to fail fast and learn from those mistakes. It gives your team enough time to be able to correct those mistakes and build a better robot. As always, good luck teams this season. We look forward to seeing you at an event. Crescendo! Crescendo!